This is step support assignment number one. It's from a step paper. If you want to look in the database, step number one, 2005, question number three. It's the very first one in the step of support assignment. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's essentially just a question involving algebra and quadratics and that kind of thing. Let's start from the top with part one. Um, show that if A and B are either positive or both negative, then the equation this has two solutions. Well, it would make sense to just start with this and simplify it. So if I multiply this fraction by x minus b over x minus b, of course, I'm just multiplying by one, essentially. And if I multiply by this fraction by x minus a over x minus a, get the same denominator, which is good, which means I can put the fractions together. I've also expanded the fractions out, the, the brackets out a little bit on the top here. Um, and of course, now that I have this, I can just take this whole object from the denominator and times it over here. Of course, one times it is just itself. Uh, this cancels with this, this cancels with this. The x squares kind of go away a little bit and you end up with this. When you root, remember when you square root, you take the plus or the minus answer. And of course, now we can read straight away that we have two solutions. Either x is plus root a b or x is minus root a b. However, if you stop there, then you lose a couple of marks because you just need to be really careful about this because sometimes here you don't have any solutions, at least not any real ones. If a was minus one and b was one, you'd be doing the root of minus one, which you can't do for a real solution. So you need to say here really carefully, okay, this is fine, this has two solutions, root a b and minus root a b, as long as either a or b are both positive, because of course positive times positive is positive, or a and b are both negative, because of course negative times negative it's also positive. So you just have to say that really carefully. And if you want to, you can be even more careful after that, where you can say, also, neither of them can be zero. Because if one of them was zero and the other one was, say, two, you'd have zero times two is zero, and the root of zero is zero. That's fine. You can do that. But you don't get two solutions, right? Because zero is just one. Plus or minus zero is just zero. So neither of them can be zero as well. Okay, and that's part one done. Just be really careful to fully explain everything about the question. Part two, uh, this is very standard in step. If you look at, uh, at part two, this is almost the same as part one. They've just lobbed a plus C on the end of this. Otherwise, it's the same thing. And this is very standard in step to make you do something fairly simple to start with as kind of a warm up and then introduce something a bit harder next. So let's do this then. Um, it starts off in exactly the same way, right? So these two lines are working at identical to what I did before. Then, of course, when we multiply this denominator over here, we end up with this extra term of c times the whole thing as well as the one times the whole thing that I had before as well. All we really have to do here though is simplify it. Like this still goes away with this, this goes away with this, the x squareds go away a little bit. When you multiply out through the c, you get this. And now this looks really messy and weird, but it is just a quadratic in x, right? You've got an x squared here or some x squareds. You've got some x's and you've just got some stuff without x. So what you want to do is you want to group those according to their power of x. So factorize out the x squares and the x's and group the things that are multiplying each of the things. So I've got a c minus 1x squared here and so on. So group them so it looks more like a normal quadratic. And now it says exactly one real solution. As soon as I read that line, I think uh, discriminant. If the discriminant is equal to 0, that gives me exactly one real solution. So, and, and I've colored these b's, a's, and c's because it's a bit confusing because these b's, a's, and c's have nothing to do with these b's, a's, and c's. Um, these ones are just referring to the standard quadratic setup of ax squared plus bx plus c, whereas these ones are actually the variables in the question. Um, so just I, I've colored them just for that reason. This whole thing is a, red a, which isn't the same as just normal a. This whole thing is just the first term of the quadratic. This whole thing is the second, this is the third. And so b squared minus 4ac is going to be this whole thing squared minus 4 times this thing times this thing, like so. And then, of course, we just work through that. Um, so just be really careful with all your algebra here. Please don't mess anything up. Um, just be super careful, with it, particularly when you get to points like this. Be super careful when you expand out that negative. Um, and now this, again, looks a bit like a mess, but thankfully some stuff goes away here. These two go away, so we can just write those out. And I notice here, now, I'm looking for the whole thing to be c squared. And I've got lots of c squareds everywhere except this. But this is actually also matches with this. So let's move that across the other side because that gives me the minus 4ab, which is good. And it also gives me stuff that I can take a c squared out of. And now that I've done that, I noticed that actually these two terms were the same all the time, all along. So put those together. This looks a bit weird, but it might look a bit more familiar when I write it like this because this is a, a very standard thing that I factorize. All I did there was move this, change the order of those. But this is a very standard factorization. Um, and then, of course, just divide by that a minus b squared uh, to get what they wanted me to get. Uh, the fact that I put the minus there doesn't matter. That's fine. 
Okay. Part or part C or part I, whatever part this is is the next bit. Show that this condition. So that's the condition I just found. Show that it can be written as this. Now you have a few options for how to do a question like this, and you have one thing that you definitely can't do. The thing that you definitely can't do is you can't just look at this and go, oh, c squared is that, c squared is that, therefore the two things are equal, and I'll try and work from there. Please don't do that, because this is the thing that you're trying to show. You're trying to show that this is the same as this, right? Show that can be written as this. You're not, you can't just take it for granted, because then you're just using circular logic. You're starting at the end, right? You need to show that this can be written as this, not just immediately assume that they can. So please don't do that. What you can do, though, is you can work with one of them and you can just do standard algebraic techniques to simplify it down to the other one, right? So you just start with one thing. Don't put an equal sign. Don't write this thing out. Just start with one thing and simplify it down to the other. And actually, when you do that, you can go either direction, right? You can either go from here to here or you can go from here to here. And the general rule of thumb, as I'll, as I'll say in the next video, is as in the next slide, sorry, is that you want to go from the more complicated thing to the more simple thing. So actually, in the next slide, I'm going to start going from this one, and I'm going to gradually turn it into this one. Your other option would have been that you can consider them together as long as you consider one take away the other. So you could do, for instance, this one take away this one, and then you could simplify that down. And as long as it's simplified down to zero, you've shown what you needed to show. Because if something minus something is zero, then those two things are the same, like five minus five is zero. So you can consider both as long as you consider one take away the other and simplify it down to zero. But like I said, I'm going to do option number one. I'll leave this for you to do as homework if you want to, but I'll do number one. I'll start with one of them and turn it into the other. And I'll actually start with this one because the general rule of thumb is you want to start with the one that looks more complicated, which sounds counterintuitive. Why would you work with a more complicated one? But trust me, it's much better to start with the more complicated one. So let's start with this. Um, and let's gradually turn it into that. So the first thing I can do is when you square a fraction, you square the top and the bottom separately. Uh, one is just any number divided by itself. So if I choose this to be the number, a minus b or squared, then that's great because I end up with the same denominator. Um, put those things together, expand out the brackets. I know I'm being very pedantic with this expanding here, writing it all out again. But when you get a lovely question like this, that's just algebra, please don't mess it up. You'll learn in step that you have lots of time um, and you are probably going to be given lots of very difficult questions to do. When you get a nice one like this, don't mess it up. Just get it right. Um, so just be careful with it. You've got plenty of time. Expand this out carefully. Um, make sure I've kept this all in a bracket because this minus, of course, expands out or to be minuses. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, oh, sorry, is I'm just going to cancel this with this and this with this. And then this, these two things go together and we jump to the answer. Perfect. Uh, so we've gradually turned this one into this one, which is good. So we're done. Now, if you don't trust me that you starting with a more complicated one first is a good idea, then sure, you can see what happens if you don't. Let's start with the more simple one then and try and turn this into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a squared to the top only to take it away again, because you'll notice I haven't really done anything here. Then I'm going to add um, b squared to the top only to take it away again, because... That's something that I guess I can do. It's fine. And then I'm going to split the 4AB into two lots of minus 2AB. And I'm going to put them in the middle of the A's and the B's. Um, and the reason I'm doing all of this is because, and then finally, I think I'm going to factorize out a minus 1 from this. Yeah. Because you can see in these brackets that these factorize perfectly now to A minus B squared and A plus B squared. And now I notice that actually, when you've got a fraction that's kind of that can be split, that, that has a minus or a plus in the middle of it and just one denominator, you can smash or, or break that fraction down in the middle. So you can smash that fraction in half. Just like, um, I mean, you're more used to doing it this way. We all know the answer to this is 5 sevenths, but the middle term is the more important one. It's 2 plus 3 over 7. And of course, that fact that we can write that means that this equal signs work right to left or left to right. It's fine. So we can smash this fraction in half and say it's 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths, just like we had at the start. So this is a minus b or squared over a minus b or squared minus the other two. So that's just this. Of course, this is just 1. And of course, this is just um, both those terms squared at the same time, which is what we had originally. And actually, what you'll notice is that, I mean, that was a horrible thing for me to do. And it would take yeah, a long time for you to come up with that on your own. And I actually didn't come up with that on my own, because all that I did was I took the first thing I did, the nice, simple thing. And if you notice, I just wrote it out backwards. 
like I, this is the first thing that I did. And you notice if you play the video back, these are just all the same steps, but in reverse, right? Everything is the same, right? You'd start with this minus four AB and you randomly add in an A squared and you take it away and a B squared and you take it away and you split up the two ABs and then you factorize them out and then you work backwards, right? So this is actually the same thing. It's just, it's very hard to come up with first time if you haven't done it sort of the easier way forward. Um, so yeah, start with the more complicated one, work it into the more simple one. We've only got one small thing to do here to finish off. Deduce that it can only hold if C is bigger than zero and less than or equal to one. So the first thing we'll say is that this number is squaring, which means this number is positive or zero, right? Because when you square a number, it's either zero or positive. So C squared is one, take away a positive or a zero number. And that's at most one, right? Because the biggest this expression can be is if this thing is zero, and then you have one minus zero. So C squared at biggest is one. No, you can't be any higher than that. So C squared is bounded um, at the top by one. So that's this bound of it got. And now we just need to get this bound. Well, that's actually reasonably okay because C squared is a number squared. So for the same reason that this was positive or zero, this is positive or zero. So C squared is bigger equal to zero because it's a square number. Now, the issue here is that I've almost got this right, right? Like I, I, I can combine these two things for this, except this isn't quite right because this sign is slightly wrong. So let's quickly fix that. And to fix that, um, and this is a key lesson in step, never forget anything that you've learned. Like just because this thing is, is written in front of this doesn't mean it's the only thing I can use. Let's go back to this for a second and consider the alternative way of writing c squared, I should say, and consider what happens if c squared is zero. So essentially, I'm looking at this and thinking, this is almost perfect. I just need to eliminate the idea that c could, squared could be zero. So let's look at this and think, well, what happens if c squared is zero? That means that this whole thing is zero. But to make a fraction zero, you just need to make the numerator zero. And the problem with this is a and b were defined as non-zero numbers, which means this thing here cannot be zero because the only way to multiply stuff to make zero is if one of the things is zero, which they're not. So C can't be zero or C squared can't be zero. And therefore we can eliminate that case that we had here um, down to uh, this exact case that we have here. And I think we are done with the step question.